Hey guys, welcome back and today we are going to talk coffee grinders. And this video is going to be more conversational. Really, I want to kind of establish the why, why you might want to grind your coffee instead of using pre-ground coffee. And we'll go over some of the benefits to some of the coffee grinders that I've chosen for myself, like the Fellow Ode and like the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. I'm also going to include the Hario hand grinder and really we're going to talk about just hand grinding in general not really why um, this one is here instead of any other so let's get into it first i just want to say i'm not sponsored by anyone not yet i just like making this kind of content and i think it can be helpful we'll start with the why it's always fresher to grind your coffee and it's because whole bean coffee holds its peak freshness longer holds its general freshness for longer. So maybe you've missed peak freshness. That two to three week window after the roast is kind of when it's pretty much at its best flavor. After that, it tapers off week to week, little by little, and every coffee is different. Pre-ground coffee has a lot more opportunity to lose that freshness more quickly. Uh, it just becomes stale more quickly. And it's as simple as that, really. It's about holding on to that freshness for longer. But once you start doing it, once you start making it a routine, it's really enjoyable. It's a part of the process that for me really just kind of locks in my morning routine. And I think once you get your hands on a grinder, you'll start to notice that there's a whole lot more options for you. I know, and personally this is something that I do as well for my farmer's market sales, is that some of my coffee options, because I have limited amounts of them, I can't just go ahead and grind a coffee that maybe I only have a pound or two of because I'm doing half pound batches at a time. I would rather those limited options stay in whole bean form because for one, I charge more. So there's a different tier of people who look for the higher priced coffees because they know they're either limited, timed, exclusive, or they're perhaps just a really, really rare, or um, maybe a higher quality coffee than they're used to. And so keeping those in whole bean form ensures that those people have the right amount of time to find those beans. So finding yourself a grinder is not a difficult task, but finding the one for you might be. Uh, because a good grinder isn't cheap, cheap grinders aren't good. So you really wanna be buying a burr grinder. Burr grinders come in all shapes and sizes, as you can see here. And they are really important because they actually use really specially machined burrs inside of them that grind the coffee in such a way that it remains consistent. And that's important because grinding your coffee every single day is quite a task for a home use machine. Now, there are blade grinders in a lot of, you know, big box stores that you really should avoid. A blade grinder is literally just a set of spinning blades, kind of like a cheap food processor, where all that happens is this blade just spins and spins and spins. There's no settings to change. Some of them may have different speed settings, I'm not sure. The biggest problem with these blade grinders is inconsistent grind sizes. Grind sizes is a huge topic of conversation when we talk about grinding coffee. Grind sizes are an important part of making sure that your coffee tastes good and having consistent grind sizes ensures that however you like your coffee, that method of brewing can be kind of perfected. So you don't want a blade grinder. The blades just, all they do is spin for however long you hold that button. They make really inconsistent grind sizes, which can result in just a really difficult to perfect brew it can result in, a, in a, a really bitter brew. It can result in a very under extracted or a very over extracted brew because you just can't control the grind size consistency. Big problem. So that's why really you should step up to a grinder that has a burr set in it. All right, so you may have seen this grinder here in other videos that I've done before. This is the Hario Mini Slim Pro and it's extremely versatile. It's lightweight. You can pack it down pretty nicely, but the important part is it is a great grinder. It's got a nice burr set in it, and it's got 
settings that you can control the grind size for and it allows you really consistent grinds for a low price, relatively low price, and it goes anywhere. Um, the way it packs down in my bag, I love taking it out into the field, but there's a time and a place. You don't wanna be hand grinding your coffee every single day for 20, 30, or 40 grams every time you wanna brew coffee. That's where electric coffee grinders come into play. I have two here that I really like. This is the Fellow Ode. It is $299 and I believe that they just came out like a week or two ago with an updated version. I think they call it the Fellow Ode Gen 2 and it might even be more than $299. It might be $349, $350. I think they upped the price just a little bit. But why? Why would you pay $300 for a coffee grinder? First of all, coffee is an everyday part of my life, sometimes multiple times a day and I want a machine that can withstand long-term use at high quality. I want good, consistent grinds every time I use it for years to come, and this will give that to me. As long as you take care of it, a little bit of maintenance, and we'll talk about that too, it'll last a long, long time. $299 is a tall order. I know that there are a lot of you out there who just aren't even considering this because that price range is ridiculous, and let me tell you, that's okay. It's not for everyone, and it is okay to spend much less than this. But I like this. This coffee grinder gives me everything that I need for the type of coffee that I want to have. It's great for pour overs, and it can get as fine as I need for AeroPress too. But I have this coffee grinder here because this grinder cannot grind fine enough for espresso use. And espresso is a whole nother topic as well. We won't dig into much of that, but I will just say this grinds fine enough for espresso. It may not be the best grinder for espresso by any means, but it gets the job done. Back to the oat. I just love how it looks. It goes with some of the kind of finishes around my house. I love the kind of wood aesthetic with kind of black finishings, and this being all matte black just is... One of the things I really like about this grinder is this nice big tactile dial that comes with it. It's super clicky. Catch cup, magnetic. As you might also notice, the hoppers are much, much different. This only holds, um, I don't remember the exact weight, but it's basically, specifically single use. This is a single dose hopper. I use this grinder for grinding my, my, my bags, my eight ounce bags, and I can pour an entire bag in there. It'll grind it, no problem. What really justifies 299 is that great burr set, the consistent grinds for my pour overs, I really like that. Um, and it does go coarse enough to give me French press or cold brew size grinds, um, but I don't do that very often. I really kind of have it locked in to where I like it for pour over. So it's very, very consistent. It's very reliable and the aesthetic is great. But again, $299 might not be for you. And that's totally okay. The Breville Smart Grinder Pro is $199. So we're talking $100 less than the Gen 1 Ode. This is a great, versatile, all-around grinder. I've been using it maybe seven or eight months now, and every week I pile up five to 10 bags of coffee that I need to grind for my farmer's markets, and it'll chew through them. Now, $199, why is it cheaper? The grind sizes aren't as good, aren't as consistent as what the Ode provides, but, $199 is a great price point for a good grinder. This can be an awesome, awesome purchase for Christmas, perhaps, or for um, a birthday coming up. This is a grinder that if you have like a Mr. Coffee grinder or one of those blade grinders I was talking about, this would be an excellent upgrade for someone in that situation. Now, if you're talking about high level espressos every day, if you're talking about, you know, getting the best out of your pour overs, this might not be the best option. This isn't the best for any one type of brew, but it will do a good job all around. I have used it at its coarser settings for French press and cold brew, and I often use it at its finest setting to get my espressos done. It comes with a couple of things. So kind of a catch bottom here where uh, it just makes cleanup easier. This little holding tray comes with it that kind of slides up into here. 
for your portafilter. This is for an espresso machine. Uh, I have a bottomless portafilter that I purchased for my espresso machine. Uh, I can't quite remember the, the diameter, but I believe this grinder comes with two sets of these little trays here. Um, and what's nice about them is it, all it allows is for your portafilter to kind of hang out much closer to where the coffee exits the grinder so that you don't have them flying all over the place. So that makes it kind of a nice grinder for espresso, for pour overs, for drip, for French press and cold brew, all the way up and down the kind of brew method scale. But you can start even cheaper than this. And I recommend it if you're really hesitant about getting a nicer grinder than perhaps a 10 or $20 blade grinder. I will leave a link below to the OXO Burr grinder. Now that grinder is one that I recommend all the time because it comes out at, I believe, $89, perhaps $99. It's on Amazon, but I'm sure you can find it other places as well. It looks a lot like this Breville Smart Grinder Pro here. The OXO Burr grinder does quite a lot of the same stuff. Now, I don't know exactly what the differences are. Um, I've never had one in my hands, but I often recommend it because of its price point, because it's much easier to gift at $89 or $99 than $199. It's got settings for sizes. It's got a decent set of burrs in it. It's got the hopper. So it, it's got everything you need to really get started. Um, the OXO Burr Grinder is, from what I hear from the people I've recommended it to, a great starting point. People really seem to like it and I keep recommending it because I keep getting that feedback. That said, if you've got the budget for $299, $349 for the Gen 2, or $199 for the Breville Smart Grinder Pro here, um, I like these a lot. There's a lot of hand grinders you could choose from uh, and there's plenty of other options in these price ranges. So don't be afraid to, you know, get in there, get into the nerdy stuff, do some compare and contrasts because I always recommend doing some research for exactly what you need. If you need a great espresso grinder, but you only have 200 bucks, you might be able to spend that $200 differently to get a grinder that's much better for espresso, um, but maybe isn't as good for pour over, cold brew, or any other method. So take my advice and my experience with a grain of salt because everybody's experience is a little bit different everybody's preferences are different the way you spend your money is really up to you and you need to do that research to determine how best every dollar you spend can be used with that said there is some maintenance to be done pretty much all around often your burrs need to be cleaned i'll say often but for me someone who uses it once or twice every single day it comes out to like once every three, four months, really. And all that involves is taking the faceplate off here. Um, and I think this is magnetic too. You take the faceplate off, you take the, the big dial at the front off, and then you have access to the burr set behind it. You just have to unlock the auger and then you can slide out the burrs and clean the burrs off. It's not too big a deal. And Fellow does provide video instructions for that as well. So you can be pretty confident that you can get that done, put everything back together. Um, I will say if you have zero experience with like a screwdriver, this might be a little bit more than what you want. But if you can watch a video and follow instructions and you're comfortable with a screwdriver, basically, um, you can perform general maintenance on this and keep it running for a long, long time. Same thing with this. Uh, this one actually doesn't even require a screwdriver. You turn the key here and that unlocks the hopper. And I need to clean mine out pretty good. But basically the burr set's right there. This one is really easy to get into. You can get into it much quicker than this. All you gotta do in here is there's like this little lever you grab onto. You turn that and that kind of unlocks it. And there's your burrs. There's little uh, markers in there to let you know where to line things up. It's really quite easy. And once you've got it cleaned out, you just get that hopper back on there, turn that dial so it's not going anywhere and it won't grind if that's not locked in. Before I do the video that I've got planned showing you all the different little things that I use, um, I didn't want to kind of gloss over what coffee grinders I had and I use before I 
did a nice video explaining why I've got these, why they are useful to me, and why maybe you might not be into these grinders. Maybe you want to step into grinding coffee at a lower cost, because cost is important. And you don't want to overspend if you're just not going to realize the benefits that come with some of these grinders. I know this was kind of a more boring video. I hope that it was helpful. That's always my hope is when the videos are boring, they're at least useful or helpful in some way. So <clears throat> let me know in the comments below, what kind of grinder are you looking at? What kind do you have and you really like? Um, I would love to start a conversation. Do you not grind your coffee and you are pretty hesitant about what to buy? If you've got questions, leave them down below. I'd love to help. I appreciate you being here. Hit the like button below, subscribe for me if you're new here. I would love for you to stick around. I've got some really cool stuff coming up. I'm actually traveling to New Orleans soon with my wife. I think I'm gonna produce some travel vlog coffee videos. I would love to check out some of the nicer coffee shops uh, in the area of New Orleans that we're staying. So I would like to make that kind of a travel vlog, not too dissimilar to my Coffee Anywhere series. Uh, where I'll be on the way somewhere cool making coffee or trying coffee at these coffee shops and maybe getting a little more experience with high-end cafes. So stick around. I'd love to show that when I've got it ready. But in the meantime, yeah, I appreciate you being here. Thanks. See you next time.